All right, so I've got a quickie for you guys here today. I have the brand new Funny Playing IPS Ready Game Boy Pocket Shell. Uh, so this is actually my first time checking this out. Um, like usual with my videos, I tend to not go over this stuff ahead of time or, or check out other media because I want to form my own opinion on it. And as it would appear, this hasn't even been opened yet. So I'll take my ridiculously dull knife, cut that open, and here is what we get. Uh, so this is going for about 15 bucks, um, and you just get the shell and the screws. There's no buttons, no stickers or anything. Um, but what's different about this shell compared to previous aftermarket Game Boy Pocket shells is this one has the interior molding already done specific so that you can drop an IPS LCD in here. Uh, it looks like another one of the modifications that was made um, was they cut out the battery compartment a little bit. Um, you should still be able to use your normal AAA batteries, but this has been modified so that if you want to use a lithium ion battery, um, you'll have an easier time at that. Apparently it's not sized for this one in particular, but you get, you get the idea. A stock Game Boy Pocket looks a little bit more like this with the, uh, with the divider in there. But anyway, let's go ahead and check it out. I've also got from Funny Playing. Both the sets of new buttons that he's making. Uh, looks like he's making just gray and then DMG pocket style buttons with the black and red and then, yeah, just gray. Uh, I am particularly excited about this because the previous aftermarket shells for these things have been tremendously low quality. And I am going to be using my existing Funny Playing Game Boy as a, uh, we're, we're just going to drop this whole Game Boy in the new shell and try that out. Uh, but before I do so, I peeled that tape off and that tape was serving a function. Uh, I use this Game Boy for battery testing and since the contrast wheel sets the brightness, I would like to mark off the brightness level with a marker here. But the tape was there just so I don't change that. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this torn dude. I need that, and I believe I need that. So this is designed specifically for the Funny Playing IPS kit, but I have a couple other kits here uh, to test out and see if those fit. I don't see why they wouldn't, but we'll try it out. Out of sheer curiosity, this is an OEM rear. This is the funny playing front, and that is a um, very, very good fit. You can tell my shell's a little bit yellowed just looking at the color between the two, but that's good. That's nice. I think these are going to be good. So rather than risk trying to pull yet another LCD out of this Game Boy Pocket, I am just going to install a brand new LCD. And we'll go that route. Because 
I don't quite have it in me to ruin a third LCD or a second LCD. Yeah, to ruin another LCD. All right, so I'll set this aside. And this is what we need. Again, we would need the LCD, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab a new one. So this one in particular is from a Game Boy Color kit, but since it is the exact same LCD, I don't foresee any problems. So that goes in there very comfortably and it centers up just like that. You don't have to do any trimming, you don't have to, no brackets, nothing. Before I set that in somewhat more permanently though, I also have the, um, the other kit that came out recently for Pocket. It's full size. I believe this one is from Cloud Game Store, but don't quote me on that. It should fit, but we might need a bracket to keep it in place. Yeah. Very loosey goosey in there, but I see no actual problem with using this one if you want to, as long as you're comfortable with um, lining it up. The only real issue is that the screen itself basically fits through the opening on the sides. So it's not going to quite seal as completely against like dust or whatnot as some of the other screens. So I don't really recommend this shell for that, but it will work if that's what you got and that's what you want to use. Set that, put that away. That. That aside. Okay. So next up, let's check out the adhesive that normally comes with these things. Uh, I could have sworn this goes in like that, but I'm guessing that's not the case. How does this go then? I think I need to go look something up because I thought this this weird cutout here goes towards the bottom, but none of that lines up with anything. And then we have this cutout towards the top. This might not be for a pocket. This might be for a DMG. And if that's the case, I won't be using it. I will be right back. Yep, this is for a DMG. So I don't have any pre-cut ones for pocket unfortunately but that is okay because all those little centers that we that I pop out I must always save and uh, can make our own little gasket here now this one we can almost just cut out the center it almost fits But before I even bother with that, I am going to install it like this and make sure that everything still has clearance. Uh, it's not going to work, as in obviously this is obstructing the screen, but we want to make sure that everything actually fits before I um, make that permanent. So let me get the brand new buttons that I had set aside here there. And unfortunately, you do need to bring your own membranes. That's nice. I've never seen these color without being all scratched to hell. Uh, I'll just reuse those ones. And 
And then I'm not gonna bother plugging that in because it's not really gonna work anyway. Ooh, actually I should because that's gonna interfere with the screw hole. And normally I like using my OEM screws, but funny playing shells in particular, um, usually the screws that come with those are a little bit shorter, and usually for good reason. But these ones actually look longer, interestingly enough. So there are three shorter ones and then the six longer ones. Yep, that makes sense. And those are crosshead, which are usually JIS, not Phillips, and then those are the tri point or Y bits. Really, I should start with worst case scenario first and throw a um, PCB based kit like the uh, one chip OSD kits. And I don't really like how that's fitting. So I don't think. I think adhesive is not going to work, at least not this thicker stuff, maybe some of the thinner stuff. You know what, this is getting stuck temporarily to that. That way it doesn't get ripped off, and that way I can remove it easily. Interestingly, something I haven't seen on Funny Playing's buttons, but I have seen on other aftermarket buttons, there's some flashing left over from the mold. I need to get trimmed off. Uh, despite that gap, though, it does look like it's going to go together just fine. Oh, are these different sized? No. How interesting. The last time Funny Playing made a shell, well, not the last time, but the time before, the first time they made a shell, the uh, screws they used had a different size driver. You know what I think that is? So you have to use a slightly smaller bit. Yep, that's it. Which isn't the end of the world, but it is still... It is still annoying, and I wish they would just use the same size. But I don't know if that's practical.
right in real nicely though. So that's that's a bonus, I guess. And it's not it's not too tight, you know. There's still a gap in there. So I'd say if you want to uh, stick it down with some double-sided tape, you're probably more than good to go. And the lack of that divider does not seem to do anything for battery compatibility. It's booting, I can see that much, but obviously you can't see much of the screen. But it sure looks centered from what I can see of the bezel. Or at least straight. Which makes sense. This kit is designed for this, or at least this shell is designed for this kit. Hard to say which one came first. So yeah, I'd say that'll work. It's pretty nice. I'm digging the, the feel of it. The buttons feel basically OEM, which does not come as a surprise. Uh, funny playing is usually really on top of that. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Um, I guess let's keep playing with it and see if one of the one chip kits will fit in place of funny playing because I just recently did a stream on a different case entirely and had some problems with the other brand kits not quite fitting right. Uh, whether that was due to the PCB that they use or what, I have no idea, but more data is always more better, I think. So let's try some more stuff and see what happens. So short of taking apart my other Game Boy, I don't actually have another one of the one chip kits for Game Boy Pocket to try out, but I do have that Game Boy Color kit still, so we'll try that. Should be the same. I'm just going to unplug that though. This is uh, missing chunks of the PCB, so let's do that one instead. <laughs> Probably won't make a difference, but let's just play it safe. <laughs> Similar deal here. I don't like how that fits, but it's 
probably still fine. Yeah, it certainly goes together. Let me throw some screws in here. In the interest of saving a little bit of time, I'm going to skip to the bottom screws. The two bottom screws, rather. nice and unobstructed, so is contrast. This is significantly tighter, so I'd say if you're using a one-chip kit, don't use one of these gaskets. Um, this is a little bit too tight for my liking. You'll probably get pressure spots on the screen. If you're using the funny plane kit, yeah, you can probably get away with it, but I'd still use um, thinner tape. Or no tape, for that matter. That's an option. All right. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's do a build. Also, it does make perfect sense that the kit designed by Funny Playing is designed specifically for Funny Playing kits. Um, so I'm quite frankly not surprised that the other kit is a little bit tight in here. It does seem to work though, so just ditch the uh, adhesive gasket and probably fine. But again, this one in particular is a Game Boy Color kit, so I can't actually plug it in and try it out. Alright, so let's actually... Let's stick this down with some adhesive. I think that'll be... I think that'll be good. This screen isn't going anywhere. But instead of using the thick stuff, I think I'm going to use some of this 3M 300 LSE. I'm just going to cut a few strips like this and then we'll cut them down to size. Almost good enough as is, but we'll cut a little bit off the bottom so that it doesn't extend outside the lens area in this clear shell. It is also just a hair too thick, so I'm going to use this one on this side. While it did fit the longer one, like I was saying, clear shell, so we'll avoid dearest
Beautiful. Now that one is probably also too thick. Yep. So we'll cut this one down further. Should probably just cut another strip off entirely. It's kind of difficult to cut something this thin. And yeah, that'll do. Same deal, cut some off the end. And I suppose the bottom would be the exact same, yeah, the exact same length. And this one isn't too wide, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm speaking so quietly. And you and I both know that I don't edit these videos, so it's not like I'm going to make that louder in post. Whoopsie doodle. There we go. And last, but not least... Cool, cool, cool. Now it would probably be wise to do the lens first. So I guess let's do that. My choices are, because this is what I have handy, a stock style or this um, kind of Pokemon Center Pikachu Bulbasaur Horsey Lapras one I think actually oh shoot I should have done especially since I'm doing these Famicom style buttons I'm gonna go see if I have one I will be right back Ah, I did have one, but I used it very recently on this Game Boy Pocket here with these uh, other very similarly styled buttons. So, I'm not going to rip it off. I'd love to, but I'm not going to. Um, actually, you know what? I might just do that. Screw it. It's coming off. I'm going to go find another suction cup. All right, here we go. So for those that want to know how I take these off, I use hot air. I have my hot air station set to 100 degrees Celsius, which will melt the plastic. Well, it won't melt the plastic, but it will start deforming it if I let the plastic get up to that temperature. But I'm not doing that. I'm moving it around very quickly 
and I'm using my fingers, which are basically wrapped around the edges as a, um, a canary, I guess. Uh, if my, if it's getting too hot for my fingers, then it's about to get too hot for the plastic. But seriously, it's not that hot. I'm not burning myself by holding it. So, despite it being set to 100 degrees, I think it's a little bit lower than that. Because don't forget, that's what this is set to. By the time it comes out the front end, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit lower temperature. But we just want to weaken the adhesive. Involves warming it up. Take the suction cup, stick it down, start trying to lift it. It'll actually probably be best on a pocket to go from this corner. Yep. I'm gonna slip my fingernail in there, just get a little bit of leverage. Don't want to pull too quickly because these are glass. All right. Set that aside. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to re reuse this adhesive because it's all stretched out now. Which means I need to do the exact same thing for my adhesive on the screen lens side. I'm going to pause while I do that because that's going to be tedious and y'all just saw me do that so it's not like some forbidden knowledge. I will be right back. Alright, so I just got that done and I'm all set to lay the lens down. I highly recommend just getting the right lens for the build but you know. I didn't know what lens I wanted to use until just now. And uh, RGRS, I'm sorry, I told you I told you the wrong lens. I changed my mind. All right. I suppose this lens is more fitting in the uh, long run anyway, because this is a funny playing lens. And unfortunately it does not have a LED hole, but I think that'll be perfectly fine. down noisily. Alright. And so far, it looks like I've managed to completely avoid touching the back of it. <laughs> Aside from a little bit of dust, I think we're good. This screen is going to live within this shell permanently. And I do have another one that I can use for that Game Boy Color kit, so it's really not that big of a deal. I 
The Game Boy Color Kit is just what happened to be on my desk. Oh no. Let's clean that before I get too far. There we go. It's my least favorite part. Should be good. Of course there's dust under there because of who I am as a person. Uh, I'll have to pull the lens off at some point or just ignore it and hope for the best. I think I'm gonna do the latter. that goes together nicely. Screws aren't quite as magnetic as I like, but it's good enough. Just got to move slowly. Oh, that's actually kind of disappointing. The screen isn't perfectly centered. It could be the uh, lens. The lens might be shifted a little bit too far over. But I think it's going to be fine. Also, it's a little disorienting without that power LED. I'm just so used to it being there. But, uh... I think we'll be fine. Yeah, these buttons are perfectly fine. Very happy with them.
yeah, there you go. If you're doing an IPS build, I think this case is the way to go. Um, it feels so much better, and the fact that I didn't have to trim the power switch just to get this thing to work, that is a nice bonus, because that seems to be a common issue with the aftermarket shells. Um, also, I don't have any specific plans for a lithium-ion mod, but I guess, I guess it's nice that it's included. Um, yeah, there you go. And the other battery cover seems to fit just fine. I'm pretty sure this is an aftermarket battery cover. Doesn't come out quite as easily. Which actually, on that note, oh, that is so much nicer. Yeah, I don't know what Valder's doing to make his cases so precise, so neat, so nice, but I'm I'm happy with it. It's working for me. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.